Andy Hank here with Intelwise in Pittsburgh again. What we're going to do today is demonstrate how to build a, a hatch wall around a, a hatch ladder, at a hatch ladder, because whenever you fold these things up into a ladder, they tend to have big air leaks all around them and they're also poorly insulated. So we're going to demonstrate how to build a wall first to contain the actual ladder when it folds up and then construct the hatch that will sit on top of it that's going to be made of two inch thick R10 rated foam board that's going to sit on airtight weather stripping. And, you know, basically the first step here is to clear off the plywood around the perimeter so that we can get the actual, the two by tens that we use to lay flat. Um, and then we're going to take our measurements. You know, this one's going to be about 57 and a half to go all the way past this uh, blocking joist all the way down here. And then once those are cut, we'll get our other two to go in here if we cut those at uh let's say 27 and a half we should be good to go we like to have our hatch wall usually sit outside these joists here about a, a quarter to a half inch on each side so that if the um, arms of the ladder ever kind of get bent over time and sometimes they will on these older ladders they won't uh, hit the underside of the hatch wall whenever they come up so we'll get those cut and then come back to here and again in a second, just as we're putting them together. Okay, so I've cut the side walls to my box for the uh, attic ladder, and I like to fasten them in from standing on the ladder because I can hold them to me. And you'll see that they're not quite even, and that's because the framing for the original ladder here is also not quite even, but that's okay. The main thing is that we have this secure I like to build this stuff so that if somebody, you know, comes up in here over the years, this stuff's never going to come apart. It's never going to break. So I'm just going to get a couple initial screws started here. And as I'm doing this, conscious that I'm trying to create a pretty much perfect rectangle because I'm also going to later create a lid that goes down on top of this. So whenever you do that, if you've got a nice rectangle, it's much easier to create your, your lid that's going to eventually sit in here as opposed to if you create something that's more like a, a trapezoid, then that becomes a more difficult thing to do. With. Okay, so I've got the far end already together, and I've got this side here attached on the one side. So I'm going to take my measurement inside. It's 54 and a quarter, and I want to make that the same over here. That way I know that ultimately when I put my foam hatch in, it's going to come out right. So I've got floor joists running out and I'm just going to toenail in a couple of screws around the perimeter between four and six so this, this thing is anchored in permanently and at that point anybody that needs to put their weight on this to come up and through this will fully support them it will be anchored in place very well Okay, so the next step is we've got our, our wall done around it. And as you can see, I've had somebody from below push the ladder up. And the reason I did that is because I want to measure the clearance between the highest point when this ladder is folded up, which is where these small legs come up, and the top of this lip. Because we have to make sure we're going to put a lip on the inside of this that's going to come down. It'll be kind of like this so we can get a foam board to sit down in here and we have to make sure that when the ladder comes up it doesn't fold up and pop off the lid which can happen if you're not careful the next step of building this hatch wall is we have to build a lip that's going to be consist of a two by three but it could be a two by four anything like that really but we want that lip to be about an inch and a half wide so we have plenty of clearance for that lid to set on so 
I'm gonna get my measurement for the first two long sides first. That's about 54 and an eighth. 54 and an eighth over here, which is just what I want. And once I get these two in, then I will put in the two shorter sides. But I like to make sure these are in first, and then I measure and cut these two separately just so we're not off anywhere. Okay, so this is a pretty important part when it comes to building this lip that we're going to fit down inside here. This is what our, our foam insulation board is going to rest on, okay? Now, if this thing is not level and even on all four sides going around, <clears throat> The foam board itself will have gaps around it. It'll be uneven. That creates an air leak. And when these things don't work right, sometimes you can see mold around the perimeter. So we need to make sure that thing's right. And in order to know how far down we can come, when we took our initial measurement, we knew in terms of distance, we have six inches of clearance. So in this case, I know that if I come down here and mark it at the seven mark, which is about two and a quarter inches from the top of this, I'll be good. The reason I'm doing this is because sometimes these boards are warped and usually the flattest, most even boards that we have to work with in a home is the existing uh, box that the, that the attic ladder is sitting in. So we're gonna use this as our basis point. I'm gonna come up and just make a notch right in the middle at the seven inch mark here. The seven inch mark here and now I go to fit my lip in you can see that black mark it's going to be just right there I'm going to get one screw in right in the middle and once I have that one screw in then I'm going to use my level okay so now that's pretty tight now I'm going to use my level to make sure that we're level everywhere levels just about Looks good there. Always measured at both ends. Right in the money there. Seems so still good. That'll work. Always try to be a perfectionist with this stuff. So, <clears throat> I'm going to get this board in, do the same for the other side, and then we'll go back and put in the middle ones. Okay, so I've got the two side lips on here. I'm going to get my measurements right now for the two end ones. And 24 and a half should be the same here, 24 and a half. I'm going to cut those and put them in. What we're going to do right now is show you how to make sure this inner lip that the actual hatch sits on is nice and even and level all the way around it so you don't have any uneven spots that can allow an air leak to happen. Once you've got your first two long sides on, you're gonna cut your two end pieces here, okay? And what you've gotta do, and I don't have it all the way in yet, but I've got two screws started. You've got to be able to run this thing down. You have to absolutely test this. You can't just eyeball it because it comes out like that and you can see there's a gap there or maybe it goes in like that a little bit and all it takes is being off a quarter of an inch or so and now you've got a permanent air leak there. So we're gonna get this nice and flush just like that. I'm holding it on the other end while I do this, holding it firm there. What I'm going to do is drive this screw in while I know that it's nice and easy. Now, right here, you can see that goes on there nice and easy. There's not going to be any problems. Now we're going to come down to this side, and it's got to go down just a little bit. But let's say maybe you cut this piece too long, and it goes in like that, or it's warped. Whatever, whatever you've got to do 
if you've got something flat sitting on it, you can see now, oh, it's still catching. So we're gonna adjust it until it smoothly goes across. That's perfect, butter smooth. We know that the lip is going to now rest on that perfectly without, on, without an air leak. Drive it in. So in order to do your foam board, you don't wanna do it perfect. So right now this is 27 and a quarter inches going all the way across. If you try to get it perfect, usually what happens is at the end of the day when you're cleaning up or you know, at some point in the project, you're gonna put the hatch on and it's not gonna fit. It's gonna to be too big somewhere. And then you're gonna be caught trying to trim the edges of it. <clears throat> it's better just to get whatever your natural measurement is and take off a quarter inch, or maybe a half inch, but take off just a little bit and then you'll have just enough wiggle room to slide it into place without it having it being an issue. So I'm cutting the, the uh, XPS board. This is what we use, extruded polystyrene. The reason that we use this stuff is because it's super durable and it's also an amazing insulator. This is a two inch thick sheet of it and R5 per inch, it's gonna give us an R10 rated hatch on the top of it. And this stuff, I mean, you can drive a truck over it. So we know that this is still gonna be there 10, 20, even 30 years from now, as long as somebody hasn't gone out of their way to damage it. Um, I'm just cutting it with a regular circular saw. One tip is that <clears throat> when you're cutting it, if you do have to stop during the cut, turn the saw off. Don't keep rotating the blade because it heats up and it will actually melt this stuff. So you just want to keep a continuous cut going. When you do have to stop the reposition, turn the saw off. So the next thing that we're going to do is attach our handholds to the bottom of this hatch so that when the homeowner comes up their, their ladder, they can just grab this thing and push it off to one side or the other. And we're just going to do that using the leftover two by threes that we have from cutting the rails, the lips that this thing's going to sit on. And you know, this is maybe 18 inches long, but it just really any piece of scrap wood you can get your hand on will work. I'm going to attach it from the back side with three inch screws and a one and a half inch fender washer. But it doesn't have to be one and a half, one and a quarter will work, but a washer big enough to grab the back of the foam board. Now I'm just going in here, about the midpoint in the board, maybe uh, a foot or so back from each end. Get my screw started by pushing it through the board and drive it through with, with an impact driver. All right. So I've got both handles secured. The next thing I'm going to do is attach weights to the back of this. We want to have this lid have a little bit of weight on it so that it sits down firmly on top of the weather stripping that we're going to install. It doesn't have to be super heavy. Um, you know, these probably each weigh four or five pounds. So all in this thing's gonna weigh about 10 to 12 pounds when it's up there. So it's gonna be pretty firm when it's on there. The main thing that you have to watch for is that you don't use a piece of wood that's, you know, maybe four feet long that's warped because if you screw the, uh, a warped piece of wood onto one of these lids, it's gonna warp the lid and you're gonna have an air leak wherever that occurs. So it's, uh, it's almost better to use two smaller pieces because you're much less likely to have that happen. These I attach to the back side. So I'll show you what the finished version looks like. You'll notice my handle here is just a little bit off, but really it doesn't matter if it's off, and, you know, not 100% square, someone's still gonna be able to grab it. Um, this is what the weights look like on the back end, and this is gonna hold it flush and firm up against the weather stripping. Last two steps we have to do here before this thing's ready is we've gotta seal the inside of this box here with siliconized caulking. Don't get the cheap stuff. If it's pure latex, it's going to crash. 
you're going to have an air leak and uh, you don't want that. So get stuff that has at least some silicone in it. And the ceiling here are just these cracks here. We're gonna get a bead along the underside of this. You know, this stuff all the way around. This big seam on the bottom because the inside of this box will be technically considered condition space. Okay, so I just finished sealing these seams that are down inside here along the corners. Right now the caulk is white, but when it dries, it'll be clear. Again, it's a, it's a siliconized latex caulk and um, it's not really gonna shrink as it cures, so it'll do what we want. Right now I'm just putting the weather stripping on around the perimeter. And uh, this is what our foam board is going to sit on. <clears throat> I'm gonna do this nice and neat and have the seams meet each other so that uh, you don't have any gaps. So I've got a strip here and a strip here at the two ends. Whenever you join these things, you wanna butt them in to each other pretty tightly so that you don't have any gaps there. Sometimes I go out and inspect some of our jobs and we'll see that there's gaps and you can see where air has been coming up through and sometimes there's even a little bit of mold there where moisture from the house has come up and hit the side of a cold hatch wall making it wet and uh, lo and behold that's where you get your microbial growth so when you get it in to each other nice and tight like that There's no gaps here, here, or here. That's what we're looking for. So now that the weather stripping is on and you know the hatch wall is fully built, all the seams inside of it have been caulked and sealed, we're gonna bring the lid up and see how it fits. This should fit right down snug inside of here. The handle's down. Perfect. So when we're done, the homeowner just has to pop the lid off like that, put it on the raised storage pad that we're about to build, and uh, he'll be good to go. Hey guys, we just finished insulating this attic here, and what I want to show you real quick is how we solved a, a situation that happens in a lot of homes. There's a, a pull-down ladder here that comes up into the attic, and what these things do is allow warm air, conditioned air from the home to leak up into them constantly throughout the winter time. That's a big energy loss point. It also allows moisture to get into the attic from the home, which can cause mold issues. Um, in the summertime, when these attics get hot, the, the, the roofing gets very hot and can radiate heat down into the house through these things. And our solution for that is to first build a, um, a wall around the pull down ladder so the ladder can fold up into that. And then we put a, a hatch over top of it, which is made of two inch thick R10 rated foam board. It's got handles on the bottom so the homeowner can easily push this on and off and maneuver it as well as some weights on the top. This thing probably weighs about 10 pounds and what it sits on top of here is a lip that goes around the inside of our hatch wall and it's got rubberized weather stripping on it and that makes a nice air seal for us. So once this thing is in place, it's, got, it's not going to allow conditioned air from the home to get up into the space and that's going to create uh, some additional energy savings for the homeowner as well as comfort. This is also a very durable solution. It's going to last for years, assuming nobody you know, kicks it or stomps it or anything like that. So this is how Insulwise seals pull-down ladders and creates a nice, durable, long-term solution for them.